Hey folks, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us this evening. I am joined for the next hour or so by my pal Foxy Jazabel. How are you, Foxy Jazabel? I'm doing good, <laughs> Steve of the House Shives. <laughs> it's been a while since we uh, talked like this, so this is really cool. Yeah, I mean, we should do it more often. I'm just like... I've just got so many other things going on outside of YouTube, like more yeah. creative, more creative things is if you probably see like, you know, I'm probably on, I'm on Twitter a lot more and stuff. So, and plus since it's my job, like I, I do graphic design for, for a community center, for a Jewish community center, AKA, yeah. uh, you know, one of the cultural Marxist, you know, <laughs> headquarters of America, you know, H. Yeah. so, you know, they do the, so yeah exactly you're part of the conspiracy now yes i I've, I've been part of the conspiracy for some time now yeah right and now i'm back i'm working with the i'm working with the globalists <laughs> i love these these like not even subtle code words that that you know anti-semites come up with so they don't have to say jew all the time yeah exactly like globalists oh who are they yeah mm. well, i wonder who they are and then when they mention them like oh yeah you know like mark zuckerberg and somebody who either has the last name of you know like rothstein and weinstein yeah. and and you know sandberg or something berg and it's like wow all these people sort of have something in common i can't put my finger on it yeah. Let's ask Mouthy Buddha what it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's not that they're all Irish. I'll say that. It's it's something else. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 been a while since we since we talked on the air, and uh, last time we had a really good chat, and we've you know talked uh, in other ways since then, and uh, so much has been happening lately in the atheist community, and just and also in the world in general. Yeah, uh, that has been a lot of it's been pretty depressing and, pre and pretty like you I mean, know, like infuriating. Every other day, like I can't even say every other day because it feels like every day almost something comes out, and then the next day is you know something else comes out and it's a bit more. It's like a bit worse than what came out the day before or like the other day. It's. Uh, yeah. What a time to be alive. Yes. <laughs> I was, it's funny. I was, um, I, I talked to my dad yesterday and he and I hadn't talked for a while. And he was like, so, you know, he was like, so do you, how you doing? And we caught up and then he said, so you keeping up with the news? And I was like, ah, oh. why'd, you know, why'd you do this to me, dad? Yeah. And I said, yeah. And then, and I, and I said something and I, and I, I realized after I said it, like, well, this is really, how bad things have gotten because we didn't none of us neither one of us said the word trump or said we were talking about the trump stuff but i said well hopefully at least a few people might be going to jail and i thought so that's how bad things are yeah exactly like you know, <laughs> keeping all my fingers crossed that maybe <laughs> two to three people exactly. might could go to jail. That's like that's as far as I'm allowing myself to hope at this point. I'm yeah. not even I'm not going any more than that. Any if anything yeah. other than a couple people going to jail happens, then I'll have a nice surprise. Exactly. <laughs> Just like with the whole um impeach Trump thing. Yeah. If that happens, I will be like, oh, okay, so that actually happened. That's yeah. That's nice. Just I, I, although I shudder to think what he would have to do that he hasn't done already, like to get yeah. people to get behind that. It's like okay, so you, you're not on board with the impeachment thing at this point. Yeah, but uh, what what's he, he gonna do? do? Would, he, would he literally have to shoot somebody in the middle of Times Square? Will that actually have to happen? Well, and it's like what people. When when pe people still make excuses for him, you know that well he didn't, you know he's not really a sexist and he's not really a racist, and they do the same things that like when people on YouTube try to hide their racism and their and their sexism, and they and they say, well, I've never heard so and so say anything racist, and what they mean is they've never heard him drop the n word. Right, Therefore, exactly. that's you know like I've, that's the I've, only racist thing. And then and then even when someone actually drops it, then everyone wants to parse over the content the, the context in which it was said, which 
granted, I am all for, you know, having nuanced conversations and everything like that. But then even when you find out the context of it, people still try to rationalize it and justify it, like with the pew, like with the PewDiePie thing. Yeah. And, you know, I listened to it and having been a part of like gaming culture for the longest time, not necessarily online, mostly arcades. Mm -hmm. Trust me, you play fighting games for a long enough time, you're going to let a lot of expletives and a lot of bad things come out your mouth. It's, it's just going to happen because it is part of the culture. The culture yeah. is so, you know, the, the atmosphere, it really is like a sausage fest. So you're going to have people there, you know, that competitive thing. And so you're going to have performative masculinity going on. You're going to have right. people like, you know, trying to, you know, players trying to prove themselves that they aren't punks and that they can beat anybody and things like, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot, I've heard a lot of problematic things said, but when you, no one can tell me that when PewDiePie let nigger, come out of his mouth that it was not in a way in you know in that like that motherfucker says that on the regular yeah. around around other people around people who don't check him right like, exactly that shit rolled out his mouth like butter sorry like we're, you know, and a, a bunch, you know, and, and people, other, you know, like some white folks are like, oh, well, you know, it's the art, you know, it's the culture of playing online and blah, 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 blah. Trust me, a lot of us know. A lot of right. us have played online and we have heard other white people online being racist as fuck and just letting all those words come out their mouth as plain as day. So, yeah, it's not just trying to be it's not just trying to be you know racist just to be an asshole aka ironic racism right, <laughs> right. but or hipster racism because you yeah. know everything that has a that has hipster next to it means that it's you know it's ironic or whatever and not to be taken seriously and it's like nah you guys don't get to you don't get to you know get away with it just because you think it's ironic Oh, yeah or God. or or not even some people the, the irony thing gets thrown out a lot right by people who don't seem to get what irony actually means yeah or, <laughs> or satire or satire yeah they, they think it they think that both of those terms mean that you were just kidding and that's that's it like, yeah and it's like they, you guys don't know what what irony or satire are right these are specific terms that have a well-established yeah, these are specific terms that mean things yeah. like i think one could one could sort of call things like yes there are comedy skits that engage in satire mm. but satire is not always comedy exactly exactly you know plenty of movies have plenty of movies have been made that have like in in dramas that have some some um element some satirical elements in them so it's not like it's not like you know just ex it's not a comedy thing it's not just a comedy thing so and the thing about that yes comedy is subjective at most times but like people too many people just don't know what that word is either <laughs> You know, and I, and you know, I really think that I really think that once, once Chappelle show, once those first two seasons were over, were over and done with, um, it definitely really, it, it really, it, it definitely left a void of comedy that has satire and that has political commentary in it. It really left a void. So folks try to get the next best thing. And the next best thing was just um, being an asshole just cause. Yeah, you know, you know, like as if that's funny. Like, oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna say like the most sexist thing or whatever. Or I'm gonna just say the most, you know, racial stereo. The you know all these bad racial stereotypes or whatever and whatever. And it's gonna be comedy and people are gonna laugh. Ha 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 ha. And it's just like. No, that doesn't work. It actually has to be funny. 
<laughs> black comedian like yeah. Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock, they may they say a lot of shit that is stereotypically funny. That is that's you know that's a lot of things that are like a bunch of racial stereotypes. Black people, white people, anybody. But there's actual talent, there's actual comedy, there's actual satire, there's actual commentary, things are being said. And they're also smart enough to look back on things that they've done prior and be like, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm not so sure I should have said this stuff because not everything is, you know, necessarily for mass consumption. Yeah. You know, like when, when Chris Rock says that a lot in regards to, um, I think it was from one of his first specials, Bring the Noise, when he made the, when he made the, um, the skit about um, black people versus niggas, niggers. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just thinking about black people, I hate niggas. Yeah. Now, we all know that, that that is definitely an internal problem with us as a group, but that is not something he w- and he was definitely speaking to something that we, that black people as a group have internalized. And that, it's something that we, that we've internalized from, from, um, from society and things like that. And since Chris Rock put a face and a name, sort of put a name to that, other other people, non-black folks, sort of thought that it was okay to sort of grab onto that and be like, yeah, you know, I have plenty of friends who are black people and, you know, it's the niggas that I don't like. And it's like, whoa, first of all, where the fuck did you hear that? Right. Um, What black person are, you know, are you friends with who allows you to just drop the M-bomb, to just drop that word, whether it's soft a whether it's soft a a s or hard e r e r s and where do they give me their address so that i can take some people and we can just fuck their shit (laughs) because because there there are there are things that are you know relative to certain cultures that kind of belong that should that kind of should stay within those cultures it's really not for mass consumption like the word nappy yeah you know so it's like and and the thing is is that these days you know because these days if you tell a white person that they can't say something or they shouldn't say something they get different like oh my god well what do you mean how dare you try to police my speech <laughs> exactly. yada, yada, yada. and it's like and it's like whoa first of all why do you want to say these words and what is like j- you know just the freedom to be able to say it and it's like you know, I'm just giving you. A, I'm just giving you a suggestion. I suggest you not say it. Yeah, exactly. You can. You can, whether or not I say you shouldn't or you can't. You can still say it. I'm not wearing a black robe and I don't, you know, sit on the Supreme Court. I can't make you not say something. Sorry about double negatives, but I can't <laughs> stop you from saying these words. I also can't stop what may happen next if you're in the wrong if you are in a certain place around certain people who you know look like me and you decide that uh you're a little too um familiar as we yeah. as we um as we darkies say <laughs> aka yeah. aka pretending as if you really know us like that right. and you don't right. so right. i can't commit that someone you know may or may not um may or may not want to put hands on you. I can't, you know what I mean? Or or cuss you out or bring you to the side and just be like, hey man, um, that wasn't cool or whatever. You know, and it's it's just it's it's definitely been like it's definitely been an interesting time. I tell you that. It's de- it's definitely been an interesting time, especially on YouTube for folks to see like how much more offensive and how much more disrespectful they can be and um i it's there's a chance that we may be at the advent of that especially with the whole you know adpocalypse thing that's been going on but at the same time since we know that there's you know people can dog whistle you know till the cows come home 
and you know still be and still you know still get that ad revenue for whatever and people can still spread toxic and you know false and misinformation and disinformation and they can still you know get bucks for it not as much but if they yeah. tailor it right if they say if they use the right if they use the right code code words they can still get away with it like that's and that's pretty much why a lot of these folks like you know like gavin mcginnis and you know lauren southern and who else these these are just words these are just names and i've i've either watched i've either come across a couple of their videos or have seen them debate other people or have seen tweets that they have that are just disgusting um tara mccarthy oh, um, um um roaming millennial Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, white nationalist Barbie, aka Tommy Lauren. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just well, it's just the shitlords who are complaining more because I guess they want to, you know, which I'm all I'm all here for everyone, you know, sort of being their best selves or their worst selves, you know, aka just showing what you are for people to see and just letting that be that. But um, but well, yeah, it's, it's kind of an it, interesting time now. It feels, it feels like, like at least to, to me, it feels like the like trend, trend. Um, for over the last, really, I guess about the last 10 years, I, I would say probably since, uh, since the, the, the 2008 election, mm -hmm. when, uh, when Obama was elected the first time, Ooh. that, that was when the, the racists sort of started to pull the knives out and they were like, <laughs> okay, we're not holding back anymore. And because I remember you know, there have always white supremacy has always been a very f visible part of of our popular culture. And there's yeah. always been like a right wing media that has been even more visible about in that respect than the rest of it. Yeah. And but like you said, a lot it was mostly just dog whistles and indirect stuff, you know, like the, a, a person like Rush Limbaugh, who yeah. who rarely would say overtly racist things but would but would would support things would support positions and policies that were detrimental to black communities and would and you generally you you knew what side he was on yeah exactly and you knew that he didn't really like if people tried to talk about racism or or you know systemic discrimination like he you knew he really didn't take that seriously and didn't yeah. think that was a thing um but then after obama was elected it seems like the people like some of the people you were mentioning and other people started just being more and more blatantly racist, but they still wanted us to act like they weren't being, you yeah. know what I mean? Like they and didn't. They, yeah. And, and they still do. Yeah. And, it, and it's because, you know, a lot of things, because uh, a lot of the things that they say without like blinking an eye, they take as, um, they, t they take as bio truth because, you know, this is, these are the things that they pick up as they go along, as they, as they come up, as they, as they grow up, as they go about their lives and everything. These are, you know, you listen to what folks like these say and you realize that like, it's not as if these ideas just came out of a vacuum. These ideas have had centuries to yeah. be perpetuated and, you know, it, pretty much proves Bill Maher wrong when, remember when he used to say like, oh, all we have to do is just wait for the old racists to die and stuff yeah. like that. And it's like, well, who the fuck do you think they're passing those ideals on to? Like, you know, they're passing them on to like their children and their grandchildren and, you know, yeah, great grandchildren. And it's not like folks are, you know, for the most part, ignoring that shit. Like, look at, you know, look at Charles, you know, look at yeah. you know, what we just realized with Charleston. Like, those are those most of the most of those guys um, were um, were university students at the Tiki Torch thing. So yeah. it's not like it's dying out with like the old as the old guard of the Ku Klux Klan die out or whatever that, you know, that white supremacy is just like dying out. Like it's not, and neither will anti-blackness, especially as long as folks, you know, continue to try to push, you know, the this narrative that we are now a post-racial meritocracy when we're yeah. not.
And we never have been. And, you know, I don't think we ever will be, you know, in, in my lifetime or yours. But, yeah. you know, the more and, and, it, and it really just seems like, you know, now more than ever, people are just really trying to push that. And it's like and, the, and that's that's pretty much the main thing that keeps that just keeps us as a as a society as a culture from going forward you know it's like I really i i you know it, it may be a cliche for me to say this because i'm a feminist but i really think pe more people need to read audrey lord and like read her essays about the use of anger and you know read what she has to say when it comes to you know like things like white guilt and stuff like yeah. that you know and and it's it's a it's a really amazing time for me right now to see like where we are as far as you know um social science denialism and things like that unless it's economics because economics yeah. is economics counts as a social science but you know folks swear up and down by it because you know free you know there's the free market yeah oh yeah free, the free market is every the free market and um bio and and biology is um is everyone's god now is that that's that that's the god yeah, those are the gods of the youtube of you know the, the skeptics that we have now so-called skeptics that we have now those are their gods Biology and econ and economics, aka you know the free market, you know yeah. because then then that's when we get bullshit like you know evolutionary uh, evil psych and shit like that. Yeah. Those are their gods. You know, I have a I have a and, and dog and dogma like dogmatic yeah. thinking. Those are their things. They just whether because I'm not sure if all of them are atheists or not or whatever, but the ones that are, they just you know, did away with, you know, Abrahamic gods and all, and then other types of deities. And they just put, um, they put natural sciences, uh, evil psych and economics, the free market. And yeah. it's in, in the place of, you know, worshiping a deity, you know, their, so. their understanding of natural science too, which is, yeah, which exactly. is not exactly which is, you know, it's like, <laughs> You know, you 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 can't even you can't remember you know past fourth grade biology. So you know, so you really have no place in any conversation, like you know, regarding you know trans issues when it comes to yeah. sex when it comes to like sex and gender and things like that. Yeah, well, it's like when when even people so and even folks who want to call themselves like sex educators, I it's really <laughs> amazing how sex, certain sex educators get in their feelings when the when the stuff when the when the information that they teach to that they use to educate folks uh, is updated. Yeah. And I thought that, you know, for all these folks who swear by, you know, the hard sciences, um, isn't that how science works when new things are discovered, you know, thing information is updated to keep up with, you know, to make sure that everyone is current on on what on on knowledge and things like that and it's like wow it's it's it's, it's so interesting to see sex educators be again have a problem with having to you know update their curriculum to you know to be more to be more inclusive and to actually be a better sex educator it's yeah just, it's, and and it's to weird. reflect it's weird how that happens and not only be a better, more inclusive, but to reflect the current state of the art of the science. I mean, that's the thing about the exactly. That's the thing about the gender identity thing that 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 blows my mind is when people will will argue when you know people who are arguing. Well, you know, gender is a lot more complicated than we thought it was, and gender identity is is a much more complex subject, and it's not as simple as well. Boys have these, and girls have those. It's you know, there's a lot more going on. And and someone will will try to counter that by saying, well, but my biology textbook, and it's like, but that's that's not an argument. 
Exactly. Just saying, that's saying, yeah, that's 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 yeah, that's that's not an argument. Like that 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 textbook was put together by a I guess, you know, by a by a group or a group of folks at a certain time. Right. Especially if you read if you look for the year that that biology textbook that you swear by was published. And also don't forget that textbooks do get updated after some time. So it's yeah. like deal with it sometimes <laughs> you, know, you know and certain ones get up get updated and it's not always a good thing as we see with you know u.s history textbooks being updated to call yeah. slaves you know um uh slaves who were brought over here during the third passage um workers yeah but, exactly so, you know make white folks feel not feel so bad that our history is so fucked up you know yeah, they were they were just immigrants. Yeah, they were just yeah, they were just immigrants who who, you know, the white man said that there was a party going on in a boat and that they can make a better life for themselves afterwards. And they came and just like, yes, I will do all this work. I will plant I will pick your cotton, I will plant your cotton, I will work in your sugarcane factories and risk life and limb. And a lot of lives and a lot of limbs were lost in sugarcane fact in sugarcane um, caning places in um, in South America at the time. That's why um, that's why they had that's why uh, the slave trade lasted longer there because they kept losing people because people kept losing limbs and being killed and not living past um, you know between 21 and 25. So they had to go over to Africa and take more people against their will. Yeah. You know, was... meanwhile, for us in the States, like they, you know, they didn't have to um, keep getting people from taking people from the continent anymore. They just made the, the folks that they had over there already, they just made them into, you know, not just, you know, slaves or, you know, workers, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> yes, uh, use the proper term, please. Uh, not just workers, but, you know, broodmares. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, well, you know, I mean, there are so many people uh, who who talk about even even now, even, you know, I mean, Christ, Roots was 30 years ago, right? Yeah. Like we, it's not at uncle Tom's cabin was, you know, 150 years ago. Like it, we've e even clueless white people who barely pay attention have had more than enough opportunities to be exposed even in a really, really watered down way to how awful slavery was. And you still have people like just the other day, John Kelly, the, the chief of staff of the white house was trying to say like, well, the civil war, you know, that was a result of they weren't able to compromise. Yeah, and it's like, oh, wow, I, I guess it's too bad they weren't able to compromise over keeping a certain yeah. group of people as property. <laughs> well, and, and I, I, I saw on... that. And it's just like, you know, and like I said, it like things like that, when you, you know, things like that and what we see in the skeptiverse on YouTube, those yeah. are those are like microcosms of showing of what the of what the larger picture is, you know. And the thing is that we live in a society that is just dead set on being in denial about our history. Either that, either just being in total denial of his of this country's history, or hell bent on you know, on whitewashing it, on, you know, on, on making it, you know, what's the, what's the word for it? I guess it's what, on, on you know, on whitewashing it and, and not making it seem as noxious and yeah. as reprehensible as it really was. And that this reprehensible thing that happened in our country for some time, for a good long time, had consequences that still reverberate to this day, that 40 to 50 years of civil rights, you know, legislation and things like that cannot undo. It, it no. hasn't, and it hasn't really undone it. You know, red light, excuse me, you know, redlining still happens. Yep. Neighborhoods are still segregated heavily by class and by race. 
you know, it just, you know, you know, resources are given more to certain groups of people than other groups of people, other groups of people. And, you know, when you, when you're dealing with folks who, you know, who are not only in denial about that, you know, as, even when you even when you throw hard statistics and even when you throw numbers in their face about it, you can only imagine what they think on like the social and cultural level. So, you know, you can't even begin to you can't even begin to wrap your head around, you know, the efficacy of of engaging with folks like that. Yeah, you know, and like. I um I think I can I I think I happened to like come upon something that was happening on Twitter involving contrapoints apparently yeah yesterday yesterday she yeah. was being interviewed I guess she she was interviewed or profiled by someone by the name of Jesse Singal yeah in Jesse New York magazine yeah of who in in New York magazine oh okay and I'm yeah. oh that's that's wonderful yeah. But at the same time, I'm thinking that, you know, based on um, one of my thoughts, someone who follows me was um, was sort of critiquing her for it. So I'm guessing that this person, Jesse, Jesse Single, I'm guessing this person doesn't really have the best reputation in regards to trans issues. Right. Yeah. You know, so I'm get OK, so. Yeah. It's it's definitely a double-edged sword because I mean, hey, New York Magazine, you know that's you know that's pretty that's pretty significant. That's pretty heavy, you know. At the same time, um, as a person from a marginalized group, I can understand how some folks would uh, would really feel off about that. It would, I guess, it would almost be like if, let's say, if you know, if Janet Mock agree to sit down with that person or if um or if uh or if like Ava DuVernay um agreed to sit down with like Sargon <laughs> you know what I mean yeah well you know you you know, you know what I mean so you're you you're getting at something that I that I was thinking about would might be an interesting thing to to talk with you about um because I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days too, um, because uh, of the contrapoints thing, and and because she has, you know, she's someone who is willing to engage with people on the other side, so to speak, from time to time. And um, I think what last week Eli Bosnick went on a live stream with Sargon, and uh, and Eli's, you know, he's done live streams with other fucking awful people too, like yeah, bearing. I remember he and Thomas, he yeah, and Smith were on um, were on a live stream with uh, with the myth with the mythicists with the myth yeah. guys. Yeah. Which, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't live tweet all of it because I really wanted to listen, but and and not to get off from the topic that you want to bring up, but oh, go for it. But like I had to stop it at a point when um Thomas and Eli were really coming for the guys mm. about having Sargon on there. And one of the guys on there said, absolutely, Sargon is an intellectual. <laughs> That's, I was yes, sitting I'm... on my desk at work. Yes. And I heard that. I was like, I had to stop. I pressed pause. At so I sat there at my desk. I thought about it for a second. I was like, I didn't just hear that. <laughs> I was like, yep, I did. And I went, you know. Switch the tab to tweet deck and I tweeted. I was like, wait a minute. I'm listening to this. I linked it and everything. I was like, okay, so I'm listening to this conversation between these two guys and the and the organizers from Mythicis Milwaukee. And this dude just said that Sargon is an intellectual. Yeah. And I was just like, bitch, where? How? Like, what? Someone well, who can't be bothered to even like read, you know, read his own sources. Like someone as just like intellectually dishonest and lazy yeah. is 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 an intellectual. Yeah. Well, like, you know, 
it's it's like if 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 you it's like if someone once asked a question like you know do you ever wonder like what we're doing here why any of this even exists and then they immediately start demanding to be addressed as a philosopher yeah. you know it's like oh no you asked one kind of deep question you that doesn't make you a philosopher okay that's exactly. not what you do yeah that was one good question and yeah. i give you you know i give you all yeah. the props for it but like yeah. you're, i'm not addressing you like you're nietzsche now for that. <laughs> exactly you're not it's not quite to that point yet yeah. you, know, you still you're have some not, work to do you're not aristotle or plato or Kant, <laughs> like or stay, um, like stay in, yeah stay in your lane like my, or or my, my my favorite my favorite philosopher to reference when when sargon is the subject is plutarch because of course he had a, a quote from plutarch on his twitter bio for like uh, at see I, for a while it seemed like and then at one point before he got banned when he started getting sanctioned by twitter for being such an asshole mm -hmm. uh, the plutarch quote w was replaced by fuck twitter so you can see how committed he is to his intellectual roots. Yeah. That's sort of the, uh, the, the pretentious Plutarch quote and replaces it with fuck Twitter. Um, yeah. But I was going to, I wanted to ask you about um, the, 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 the value of engaging with people like that and, and what the, the best way of going about it tactically is because I've seen really, really good, smart, awesome people who I love, like Eli and like ContraPoints and a lot of other people, you know, yeah. go into the lion's den, so so to speak, and and engage with people like Sargon. And, you know, sometimes they do really well and sometimes they don't, um, but it never really seems to help anything. It doesn't really make a difference. And I don't think that, I, I, I'm not someone who says you can't engage with them at all. I'm not someone who says like, it's a mistake to engage with them, period. Because I think obviously when you, when you look at things like Charlottesville and then you look at the, you know, the, the uh, white supremacist marches that have been planned since then mm -hmm. that have been drowned out and shut down by protesters showing up in much larger numbers. Mm -hmm. So that the Nazis are like, okay, never mind. You know, there's like a hundred of them and there's 10,000 protesters and they're like, okay, maybe this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. You know, like that to me is a good form of engagement. You know, you, they didn't, nobody stayed home. They didn't ignore them. They said, let's go show these guys, you know, where, the, where they are, whose town this is. And they, they made a show of force and outnumbered them and, and uh, the Nazis, you know, went away. Um, so I don't think that, you can just ignore people like that. I don't think that's healthy because then that just gives them room to, to operate. But right. at the same time, I don't think it's good. I, I don't think, I think it's almost never productive to just sit down with them and have a conversation. I think that plays into their hands more often than not. But I wonder what you think about that. Um, I actually, I agree with you. And this is, and this is from someone who thought at one point it would be a good idea to engage with folks on the other side. Right. The, problem, the thing with that is, is that even though I, I may not engage via live stream or anything that much, but I'm on Twitter a lot. Right. Just because of like the ease of the ease for me to just start talking about things that I care about. And also it's where I connect with the most people. It's how I can even stay up to date with things that are going on. So I don't always have to like go to like a news channel or a news website or anything like that. Most times the information is information is flooding into my timeline. And also thanks to the people I follow, most folks like to be kept up to date with you know, not just pop culture things and nerdy things and, you know, social justice type issues. They also like to, you know, keep a, try to be as aware as, as possible on things that are going on locally, right. nationally, internationally and stuff like that. So I enjoy my time on Twitter. The times that I don't enjoy is uh, being dogpiled by certain folk, by certain types of folks um, and seeing people that seeing people that I'm cool with being dog piled or yeah. dealing with someone who does not care to listen or who just does not give a fuck. And, you know, pretty much takes advantage of, you know, being 
of the whole, you know, I'm at my keyboard and I could just pop off however the fuck I want. Things like, oh, you know, my keyboard or my or my phone or my tablet, whatever, whatever. So, and it's and it's known that like if that if you're a woman, especially if you are a black woman or you know any other woman of color, that um, the dogpiling and the abuse that you get is multiplied is multiplied. Yeah. And the thing of it's multiplied, and what makes it what make what makes it suck so hard is also that we're least likely to be listened to when we let it be known that people tar and that's and that and that's why people target us because you know because society is taught to not listen to women um, society is definitely taught to not give a fuck about or listen to black women so you know so there's that so. Um, from my experiences in interacting with folks who disagree with me every day for the past, I've been on Twitter since 2010. So about a good six, seven years of interacting with folks who don't agree with me on a lot of things. Um, when you're dealing with folks who especially on, let's take it to YouTube now. Yeah. When you're dealing with folks who have established what type of content creator that they are, they, they've they established that when it comes to debate, they handle it as, you know, conservatives and people on the right handle it. It's not about getting to the truth. It's about, having attention on you. It's about having eyes on you and as as, mon as many eyes on you and as many ears listening to you as possible. It's not about getting to any sort of truth. It's about owning the other person and making the other person, making the person that you're talking to, your opponent seem weak. It's about ponage. Nobody wants to come to some sort of concession or anything like that. And then, and there's another thing on top of that. There's an, there's another thing on top of that. And that is how folks want their opinions, the things that they, the things that they have been taught and have believed for the longest thing, the, for the longest time as bio truths, they want them to be taken as facts, even when, even when the facts fly in the face of their opinions yeah. and just and you know it's like it's a game for most for most people on youtube especially in the skeptosphere and also people like let's say if you wanted to like you know even if like if it's just a debate with someone like say like i like i you know the the channel destiny right yeah yeah i i'm not sub to him but i tend to check out his channel from time to time because he tend, he talk, he pretty much talks to everybody. He used to be a hard right winger and now he's more of a centrist liberal. He's more like in the center now. Um, but his, the, he, and he'll debate like pretty much anybody. Yeah. He debated Sargon, he debated um, Bunty, Bunty King. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yeah. debated Bunty King. He debated Andy Worski. He debated, you know, no bullshit. Um, Lauren Southern on immigration. So he's definitely the type to talk to these folks and things like that, you know. And maybe for some people, <clears throat> it serves, or people like him, it serves as showing what you know how big of imbeciles these folks are yeah but for folks who are more concerned about stamping out um toxic ideas and perspectives um it doesn't really do much good because like i said uh, uh, folks who folks who are concerned about truth um, don't go into debates as if there is just a spectacle. Right. 
And the thing is, is that way too many, <clears throat> way too many um, skeptards do. Yeah. They don't really have, they, they really have nothing in it to lose, but, you know, um, some sort of cred as owning, you know, owning the es evil S juice feminist feminazis or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Cause they could turn off their computer and half of the, half of the things that they bitch about, you know, us caring about, they don't give a shit about. That's why they stay, you know, most of the time they stick to sort of like culture war esque things, along with some, you know, acceptable bigotry, you know, towards Muslims and, you know, Islam and things like that. You know, you don't see them tackling issues like, you know, like Betsy DeVos yeah. um, going after Title IX or Ben Carson making all of these cuts to HUD or, you know, or Jeff Sessions adding that dumbass memorandum to, you know, the religious liberty um, law or something like that, to the point of where they actually want to do away with the Johnson Amendment, mm -hmm. which pro which prohibits um, religious organizations from being involved politically and things like that. Right. Because basically, you know, basically, if the Johnson statement, the Johnson Amendment is basically like, okay, if you guys get involved in politics, then we'll revoke your tax exempt status. Right. Exactly. And Basically, we have these, we have imbeciles in our government who are pretty much trying to make it so that religious liberty, you know, American, American Christianity as it stands, which is, you know, pretty much white nationalism and Christian, you know, dominionism, uh -huh. they pretty much want to take the country to that. They want and and make it, you know, I don't. It may be hyper. It might. It may be hyperbole to say that these folks want this country to be a theocracy, but I don't think it's that far from what they want. No, they no, want no. it. They want to do it on a state level, and so and they want to be able to do it on a state level, and then you know make sure and and take it to a federal level. You know, things like that, like women still have to fight for reproductive care. Our reproductive rights are being chipped away and taken from us. You don't see them talking about that. You see them belly aching about how feminist is cancer and all this other yeah. bullshit. And it's like, you know, when it comes to, you know, the efficacy of engaging with folks like that, it's it's basically like you're asking you're asking people who have spent their lives, you know, doing the work, doing the praxis, you know, like me, like, yeah, I didn't study. I didn't, you know, study anything about feminism when I was in college and things like that. I ended up what ended up happening is I ended up following the right people who put me onto the right literature and I picked it up on my own. And this took a while. It took like maybe a year or so. And I still have I still have other things to read and finish reading. You know what I mean? So you're asking someone like me who edu who goes out of their way to educate themselves on things so that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You're asking me to engage with someone who not only hasn't done that, but is unwilling to do that. So you're asking, you're basically asking, you know, two people to show up to a gunfight and I'm the one carrying guns in there and they're carrying like butter knives and shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> And you're and and not only that, the person, the people holding the butter knives are acting as if like we better take their position, we better take their shit in good faith and treat it as valid. And it's like it's like Bill Nye debating, you know, Ken Ham. That's yeah. pretty that's pretty much what the fuck is happening. Like you expect someone who has spent their entire life in science to take this asshole who bitter pretty much takes advantage of the fact that Indiana, that you know, that their that this that their legislature is mostly Republican and you know, and and freaking like, you know, Christian freaks. So of course they'll fucking give him permission to put in uh to they'll of course they'll give him, you know, state money to create right. to admit, to put a creationist museum. In their in their state. Meanwhile, it didn't even bring the amount of jobs that that they said it was supposed to bring. No, so that's why that's why it didn't really help unemployment in that state. But and that's another issue for another time. But 
but yeah, no, I don't, it, there's really no validity in engaging with these folks because of the things, because of what I stated earlier. There's the people who you are engaging, they, they have no incentive to be informed on the things that they are complaining about. Not only that, it's it's in their best interests not to be in order to keep the following that they have and, you know, keep Patreon money flowing in and, you know, keep sub numbers going up because it's really nothing to come in and to come to YouTube and start a channel um, and pander to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. Like if if I had decided to come on YouTube and pretend to be like, you know, like that black chick, um, Candace, uh, the red, the black chick who took the red pill. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If I decided to do that and to make that an act just to get money, um, I would have been, I probably would have been in, in, and I started getting more active on YouTube like maybe two years ago. If I had started that, if I started on that tip two years ago, I would be, I would probably be out of student, student loan debt by now because it's, 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 it's a cash, it's a, it's a cash industry, especially, like I said, depending on how you phrase your things, because you can talk and dog whistle and still be able to, you know, catch ad revenue because it's a funny thing, but YouTube is the place where a lot of like people on the right, you know, whether it's far right or just conservative or whatever, they could come here, they can, you know, pander to the lowest common denominator, they can spew white identity, you know, you know, white supremacist identity politics and shit like that. And they could get such and they can gather such a big following, especially because um because they think that, you know, that the media, that mainstream media is, you know, run by the liberal, the liberal media and, you know, and the, the Jew, <coughs> I, mean, I mean, the globalists. The globalists, exactly. The globalists control all the media that we consume and stuff like that. So YouTube is our only, you know, it's only refuge to be able to say, to be able to get, get the truth out there to people. Ah! And sorry, that's my, <laughs> that's my one and only Alex Jones. And you went to Alex Jones only. Sorry, we're winning, as you know, you know, because we gotta be gotta be careful about the right wing media and all these and all these rallies, because you know Soros is planning all of this, and this is you know, and remember, folks, this is live and unscripted. I'm telling you, you can always get the truth from us. I'm sorry, that's my. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes but, I wonder. Sometimes I wonder if, if when Alex Jones just watches regular TV, if he suspects that it's not really the show. You know, like he's watching like an episode of CSI or something, and he's like, I don't think that was really the real CSI episode, because like he thinks that about everything else. <laughs> they showed me this fake CSI episode. I don't know what they're trying to pull. They're up to something. Liberal media is trying to make it seem like, you know, that's that these CSI folks are really into doing their job and that they really love that they and they actually like the government when they really are they're really in support of the globalists and the deep state. Sorry, Boy, I, sorry, deep I, state for the for you know for left for leftists who are like way too far to the left. There's there's a part of me that actually you know I I I mean I was gonna say there's a part of me that can't wait to to um to watch like the meltdowns that they're going to have when, when the black Panther movie opens. But I wonder if, I mean, I haven't, <laughs> but see, I haven't. It's going to be amazing. Like I'm just, I'm going to be, it's going to be so blackity black, 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 <laughs> black, black, black. Like it's just, I'm just, like, I'm going to go. Cause I, since I live in New York, right. So yeah. I'm going to go to Harlem. I'm not even going to take the train. I'm going to find the biggest Panther or black Cougar or something. I'm going to ride to the magic Johnson theater <laughs> on the top of a black Panther. I'm going to make sure my Afro's out to here. You know, I'm going to have, That's like, awesome. like, I'm going to have even the big, the, the pick there's, you know, the black pick that has the black fist on it. I'm going to have that. <laughs> Stuffed in my big ass afro, and I'm gonna have new ports on me. Doesn't matter. I don't smoke. It doesn't matter. New ports on me, and we're gonna have awesome. a bag full of Colt 45 and Popeyes, and we're just gonna paint the town red when that when Black Panther comes out. I can't just wait. just Pam Greer that shit. Exactly. Um, Call well, me Foxy Brown. <laughs> but you, you know, I was, I, but I. 
as I was thinking about that question, I realized, uh, unless I've just missed it, I, they haven't the, the the usual suspects. You know, the same guys that threw a hissy fit about you know a, a black guy being in Star Wars or women being in Ghostbusters. Like they haven't been throwing as much of a fit about Black Panther. And I think maybe part of that is because they just they feel like that's just not for them. They don't feel like black people are, are ruining something that belongs to them. Oh, you know? um, I have seen some pushback and it's yeah. it's because of, you know, white comic bros have been pissed because <laughs> of the lack of white people in that movie. And it's kind of like, <laughs> okay. Okay. Black people can't have anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you but can't have anything. Yeah, like we, we can't even have a fictionalized black nation that is more advanced than any other any other country and continent in the world. We can't even have yeah. that. It's fictionalized. Like, okay. Yeah. If they ever if if they ever go ahead and you know if Chris Evans ever decides to hang it up and they replace Captain America with uh the black Captain America. Then that's when the shit's Sam Wilson. Fan. Oh, they Sam, if, they, if they put Sam Wilson, Captain America, on the big screen. Oh, they will have a shit fit, and I will love it. And I'm sure, if especially if the Russo brothers are behind it, the Russo <laughs> brothers will have a laugh. They will have yeah. fun putting that script together. I guarantee it. Yeah, and it's funny. It's if, if it's funny to me how certain. It's funny to me how white comic bros think that Marvel went like all SJW and shit like that. Yeah. And it's like, they're a business. You know, I like my, I like my Marvel comics. I like the certain one. I like certain ones that I get from them, but yeah. at the end of the day, they're a business. And trust me, they, as a, as a majority, they are, they are really not that woke. Yeah. They got yeah. Ta-Nehisi, they got Ta-Nehisi, uh, uh, coats, coats. For, Black, for Black Panther. Um, G. Willow Wilson for Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel's been doing good and everything like that. Um, if they think Marvel went SJW just because Captain America was black for some time, yeah. like what the then what the fuck do they make a secret empire where they had fucking Steve Wilson? Um, excuse me, Steve Rogers. Was yeah. a fucking not was a fucking Nazi. Oh, right. Oop, I better not say Nazi because oh, Hydra isn't. Hydra. You know, Hydra wasn't. Hydra wasn't wasn't the Nazis. They just worked with. They just worked with the Nazis. So that makes everything <laughs> better. Like okay, Steve <laughs> Rogers wasn't a Nazi. He was just a fascist motherfucker. Yeah. He was a fake. He was the fake Nazis we made yeah. up, so we didn't have he, to have Nazis he was, in our comic he was book. The, he was just the ironic Nazi that had his Hydra ships, you know, um, kill. Um, what's this guy? That killed uh, this guy who he was. Um, Rick Jones, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just had him. They just executed. He was just the ironic Nazi that executed Rick Jones and basically reduced Las Vegas to ash by bombing them. And, you know, had Black Widow killed via breaking her neck. And so yeah. she's gone. And yeah, and basically would have just beat everybody to hell if, if Nick Spencer didn't. You know, have Colbic as the Deuce Ex Machina, Ex Machina, that he said he wouldn't do. Yeah, yeah. When he first started Secret Empire, but they fucking did it anyway. I <laughs> fucking knew they were gonna do it. Just fucking Deuce Ex Machina the whole thing with having Colbic somehow bring back another version of Steve Rogers, like, or you know, the real Steve Rogers or yeah. the heart and soul of Steve Rogers. I don't know. I just saw the panel and I was just like, I'm glad I didn't spend money on yeah. this shit. Well, but I mean, that's, uh, you knew, I think everybody knew that was going to happen. Was I, no, I think it would have been braver if they would have kicked Nazi Steve's ass and just kept yeah. going with it. Yeah. But Marvel don't want to, you know, and it's weird. And again, it's weird that comic bros think that Marvel is so SJW now, but they have a fascist Captain America. Yeah. They, had a, they had a fascist Steve Rogers for a while. So I know that fucking neo-Nazi fans of Steve Rogers were happy because they, <laughs> they've been fans of Steve Rogers for the longest. 
And that was before the 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 drawing of you know Nazi Nazi cap with yeah. you know Thor's hammer and shit, and him actually being able to lift it up. Yeah, you know. So, well, it's like I mean, all these cries of you know Marvel SJW is a sham. But anyway, well, yeah, they. I I feel like I I'm sorry. I feel like I that we sort of got off topic from <laughs> from the validity of engaging with the other side because i actually had something i yeah. had something that i wanted to add to that and it and it sort of kind of goes back to the contra points thing okay go for it so i saw her sort of um between uh yesterday and today i saw her complaining I and mean, well not complaining but tweeting about at first i hadn't known about the situation until tonight mm -hmm. But she was sort of tweeting on about how um, letting people know, letting folks know that she's not changing how she goes about engaging with people on the other side. She was like, if you don't like it, just unfollow me, whatever, whatever. Right. I definitely understand that. The way that she started off her thread was kind of like, I was like, eh. because mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it was mostly the sentiment of, um, of sort of of criticizing the left for not engaging with the other side and as much and thinking that, you know, thinking that that was pretty much going to be like the boon of you know us getting ideas out there or whatever, and um, and then on top of that, today um, she she had said that you know she's like you know want to know why I'm not for. Um, a violent revolution because of because something about um, envision leftist Twitter with a guillotine, and it's like, you know, she usually I'm like, you know, some people say that Twitter is not the place for nuance. I kind of think that's bullshit. Yeah, you know, yes, you have 180 characters. Some people have more now because the whole 280 thing yeah. hasn't gone out for everyone yet. But yes, you have only 140 characters to say something. So that should, you know, that should not stop you from trying to be as nuanced as possible. And people make threads all the time. If yeah. you're too lazy to read a to week to read a Twitter thread, like I, I I don't know what else to tell you. But but those things that she said kind of stuck out to me as um, I'm going to say the P word and it's privileged, mm. you know, um, when it comes to when it comes to sort of engaging with the other side, um, I think it's a very I think it's a it's a it's kind of a of a privileged mindset for some folks, white folks, mm. to sort of pontif to, you know, if you want to do it, that's fine. If you swear by it or whatever, just to exchange ideas or whatever, that's fine. But to sort of pontificate on it and then sort of harp on it and harp on it and harp on it, um, you know, it starts to come off as you start, you know, you sort of run the risk of becoming like an insufferable centrist. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. And 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 also nuance goes out the window because number one, yes, you're trans. Yes, you are a trans woman, so that's something. But you're a white trans woman who just got a feature interview in New York Magazine. Right. A black trans woman would have had to have done, had more things under her belt. Plus a certain plus, and you know, and also they would have had to do so much more to be able to even get like maybe an eighth of that recognition or an eighth of that opportunity that right. that Contra got. You know what I mean? So keep that in mind. And not every group is in a position to do that safely. And and in a way, it also puts the onus on us to, you know, try to come to some sort of compromise to folks who operate on the idea that compromise is weak. Right. So they cannot compromise on anything, no matter what it is, you know. 
or even or they'll pretend to, but then they'll still try to push, they'll still try to push their their narrative through. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, yeah. you know, pontificating on that, like it really, it's 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 not really um it's not really a good look. And let's not even talk about revolution because like I like I said in my quoted tweet, I said, I suggest you look up what Malcolm X said about revolution and then rethink this because he said, and I believe it, most folks are not ready for a revolution. They are not ready for that because if, and, and you can look at history, the majority of revolutions, not just in American history, but internationally, in history period, revolutions have not been nonviolent. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like there's even even if you want to talk about, you know, what happened in India or whatever, how many years of, you know, dehumanization and, you know, harm to folks, even death, violence has ha had had probably happened during that time yeah so there's there's really no revolution in history that was bloodless or violent so and i think it's only i think someone of a, uh, of a very privileged it's on, only folks of a somewhat you know privileged mindset can say things like that and you know can can make statements like that and also and also push the narrative of like this is something that we have to do otherwise um otherwise our ideas can't get out there our yeah. ideas can get out there and they are out there you don't have to deal with you don't have to deal with these folks to get your ideas out them and in fact at times um I think it's a better idea. You don't have to talk to them. You talk around them to get exactly. to, you talk around them to get to whomever may be listening to them or or listening to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you can put you can put things out there to make people think. You don't, you know, you don't have to you don't even, you don't necessarily have to mention them. You don't have to talk to them. You don't even have to like really talk about them. You can t what you do talk about and can talk about are the ideas that they have. Cause because exactly. let's, let's be real, none of the shit that they're saying is new. None of the shit Sargon says um, that Andy Worski says whenever he likes to, you know, whenever some, whenever like if he's ever in a conversation that involves you know, stuff about the black community he likes to say that 50% of black people are committing all the crime in the U S and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you, you, you don't have to talk. You don't have to talk about <laughs> them. Yeah. You talk about their, and th their ideas aren't new. And, and that's also like another thing, treating ideas or having, treating all ideas in good faith. Sorry, like this, the idea, the idea that black people are in a situation there, that black people are in a situation we're in because we're poor, you know, that we're poor because, you know, we're lazy and yeah. we're all single moms being on welfare and we're more prone to doing crime and we're, and we commit the, pro, the most crime. Sorry, those are not valid ideas. Those are toxic ideas. Those are racist ideas bigoted ideas whites and, and they're and i'm not going to give them the time of day i'm i don't have i'm not under any compulsion to give folks who have those ideals the time of day i don't have to address them what i can do and what i endeavor to do is address the ideas and point out how toxic they are because it's not just about this in and a, that's another thing when it comes to you know contrast point and engaging people from the other side. These are not ideas we are just dealing with, yeah. and these are not just people with ideas we're dealing with. These ideas are not new; they've had centuries to be perpetuated, and as we can see, they still are being perpetuated. And the worst thing about it is, is that there are people who hold these ideas who are making legislation that affect yeah. people 
about whom they have those ideas about. And they've been making legislation about, about people they have those ideas about. So it's, so, and that's the thing that I think a lot of people on both sides miss, but especially, but even on our side, on the left, who feel like, you know, that they have some sort of, um, moral or ethical or ethical high ground because they engage with folks on the other side yeah um there's nothing to be gained by trying to hold up as an ideal that you engage with folks who not only have um harmful ideas toxic ideas but they enable them to be perpetuated you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially, especially in light of a poll that was recently done um, that while many white people don't like white, they may not like white supremacists and they, you know, like, you know, neo-Nazis, Ku Klux Klan, neo-Confederates, all right. They may not like them, but they hold the same ideas as them. And, you know, so you may not, so people may try to you may want to be careful about maybe not saying oh sargon is the all right or that's or or you may not be you may want to be careful you may not say that outright that sargon is a neo-nazi or that he's a neo-confederate or whatever of course because he because he's never um he's never said it he's never put out he's never like you don't see him talking about how you know black people are monkeys and da 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 like he hasn't people like him and chris reagan and andy warski they haven't gone as far as that but they hold the same ideas as them as you know in regards to oh well black people are committing the most crime exactly. um you know, um, all you know, all like you know, 1.2 billion Muslims. They all practice Islam in a fun in you know uh, in a religious fundamental way. So they're all suspect to be terrorists and shit like that. Yeah. Things like that that have been perpetuated in the culture, not just in America, like the Western world for centuries. You know, the anti-blackness. Those things they may not be on Richard Spencer's level, but they definitely share his views in regards to certain things, especially in regards to the idea of white people being more oppressed or whatever at the moment. And, you know, in regards to, in regards to how they view black people, you know, Sargon had a debate with, um, I don't know if you know this person, um, Benjamin Dixon. He doesn't, oh, yeah. yeah, he's awesome. He's I great, follow right? him on Twitter and I, I try to catch his news shows whenever I can, but when I can't, I, I catch up with, uh, with when he posts videos the next day. And I caught an excerpt from a debate that they had. And the stuff that was coming out of Sargon's mouth about trying sort of, you know, pushing this idea that you know you know that that black people would be lifted out of poverty if there weren't so many like single mothers so basically and this idea is not new no not at all because it comes from it comes from a document the ideal comes from a document called the moynihan report which was put out in 1965 by a white man doctor i think his name is philip moynihan he based, and in that report, he basically stated that black people aren't moving forward as much as they should because now the women are working and the women are working and taking all the jobs from black men and they're also all on welfare and kicking the black men out the home just so we, just so they can, you know, continue to get the benefits. Yeah. So basically, all black people have to do to further assimilate into into white culture is to you know is to get married and stop having so many babies out of you know out of wedlock you know what i mean and just pushing all of this patriarchal and puritanical bullshit and it's like 
and the thing is, is that Richard Spencer shares that idea too. You know what I'm saying? So, and that, and they don't, and people like Sargon don't get that that is why Richard Spencer says that people like him, people yep. like Chris Reagan, people like Lauren Southern, people like Andy Worski, they don't get why Richard Spencer says that folks like that are a good gateway into white nationalism, which is white supremacy. You know, it's yeah. I try I, I tend to not say white nationalism because it's it it is white supremacy to me because you know it's like with white with white nationalism you basically just want a state with just white folks. Now, if, if you now if folks want to argue that oh well just because I want to just because I want to live in a place where there's only white people doesn't mean that I think I'm superior to black people. If people want to argue that, good luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but I'm saying like you know you wanna you wanna you know it's basically just wanting to live in an ethno state with with only white people. And most folks who want that are white supremacists and think and and basically want the culture to stay, want the current they want the current culture they want the status quo to stay as it is with white with the with the ra with the racial ethnic hierarchy and for and that they want white people to stay on top of that and for everyone else to be at the bottom yeah. so yeah well, well and, and i mean, I mean it, it, and so engaging and, and so engaging with those folks it really does not make a difference because like i said they don't enter into the they don't enter into these live streams they're they don't enter into it as you would enter a debate you know with the idea that there is a possibility that some of the things that i think and hold to may not be true it may be false they don't enter into that it's a game to them it's a spectacle to them so it's not of it's so to me it's really not a valid use of time a better use of time is to talk around them put your ideas out there criticize basically break down why their ideas are shit, which they are yeah and i think that that's a better use of time and you know if someone genuine if someone on that side genuinely gives a shit about examining their perspective, they will reach out or, or they will do the work. They won't just come to you and expect you to just lay everything on them and feel entitled to your label and, and feel entitled to your labor. They will do the work. They will go watch videos. They will look up things that you've said. They will look up, you know, um book recommendations video recommendations things like that they will do uh a, a eighth of the work that yeah. say armored skeptic and shoe on head have done like oh it was only it was talking to feminists that i knew i wasn't an anti-feminist oh well great that's 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 really no different from fucking you know tj <laughs> basically you know whining about how bad tumblr feminists are and just putting yeah. it out there that all feminists are like feminists on tumblr like you know and then when you say if you say audrey lord and bell hooks they'll probably look at you like you know like someone stuck their foot up your ass like huh <laughs> so well it's yeah like, I mean, it's like an insult it's like oh well you know jazz you should engage with the other side and i'm like like who these motherfuckers like yeah. like I would rather engage with Navalnik. <laughs> you know, I or you know, or get a transvaginal ultrasound or something. <laughs> something name something really uncomfortable. Name something yeah. very uncomfortable or name something that is just like the most boring. I would rather watch the most saddest porn from the 1980s. <laughs> And then you know, you know, watch paint dry. You know, yeah. watch my watch my cat lick her ass. Then, <laughs> fucking, even fathom on like, oh well, maybe I should, you know, ask to be on Sargon's live stream so we can have an open exchange of ideas and I can, yeah. you know, understand why, you know, why he thinks feminism is cancer and he thinks that, you know, black people 
we'll get out of poverty um, if we just get married, even if we're poor or say, you know, um, thinks that Black Lives Matter is a racist organization. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the thing is, since these ideas are not new, you don't have to fucking talk to these people to find out why they think what they think. No, they're like, not, yeah. They're, 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 not not, the they're not new if you're, if you're paying attention, if you read up on history, if you read up on, you know, these on sociological systems and shit like that, if you pay attention, if you really cared, you, you will understand, you, you know, there's, there's really no reason, there's really no reason to engage with folks like that. You know, to be to rein it in and be a bit nicer, I will just say take it by a case by case basis. Yeah. But with certain folks, I'm sorry, you know what the fuck you're getting into if you decide, oh, well, maybe I'll just go and talk with Baring and see what he says. I'm sorry. For some yeah. people, I I may maybe I, I feel this bad for your boy Eli, but I don't yeah. feel that well, I don't feel, yeah. You know, I, like I just I've never thought about having like some an exchange with Barry or something like that. I can I can just go by, you know, there's nothing wrong with like just going by, you know, Christie's experiences and Tim's yeah. experiences and, and you know, the motivator like Tim yeah. was pretty much the type to really engage with those folks. And he has. And same with Kevin. And, yeah. you know, same with um. Same with Mike Rollins. And, yeah. you know, me personally, I was like, uh, you know, I'm not a fan for, you know, going up to, you know, uh, a huge pile of dog shit just to smell it and see if it stinks. <laughs> exactly. But if, that's, but if that's what you guys like to do, that's that's your prerogative. And it just took a little time, time after time, and getting burned by these folks. And, you know, Listen, sometimes you can show folks better than you can tell them. Sometimes, like, hey, you want to go touch the stove just to see if it's hot? Do, do, do you right. think? Do you? Like, I do you. I said what I said. Yeah, exactly. I, I told I, you. <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, it's like, that's, you know, just listen to black women like I told them. Yeah. You know, 90, well, 94 to 96% of us told, told y'all who to vote for. Y'all motherfuckers <laughs> are like, no, nah, no, nah, hold my beer, bro. Like, okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's another there's another side to that too, and I I don't disagree with anything you just said. I think, and I, I know a lot of times, like when people who we're both friends with, like like Kevin Logan or or Mike Rollins or Demotivator would would go onto these live streams with people like Sargon or Baring. I think you and I were both sort of in the camp of going like, well, okay, if that's what you want to do, but it's a exactly. waste of fucking time. You're like, yeah. you know, what you're not gonna. You're not going to accomplish anything. Like um, what, and, and you know, what new, is there anything new you're going to gather or yeah. learn about the person or from this person by going on to the stream with them yeah. or by talking with them? You know, and, like, I, yeah, like I said, I've watched Sargon in like two and a half debates and that kind of tells me everything I need to know. Yeah. I saw the debate with Christy Winters. I saw him debate with uh, Michael Brooks from the Ma Michael Brooks from the Majority mm -hmm. Report. Like, I'm I'm good. Like, I'm good. Yeah. You know. Well, and and the other thing is there there's there's the that aspect of it that it's just a waste of fucking time. And like you compared it to touching a hot stove. Like you don't really need to touch the stove to know that it's going to burn you. Yeah. Um, and but there's also the fact that i mean for like for, if it's someone that i have a history with and that i know them and i trust them like eli uh or like contra or like one of the our friends that we've mentioned like i don't necessarily worry about them oh they're going over to the other side uh, but i still have that what's the fucking point why are you doing this um, right yeah but, i don't wor i don't worry about them being like you know turned to the other side yeah. or anything like that i just as a friend i don't like it or not don't like it i worry about folks wasting their time on yeah. people that they're probably better off not wasting time on that's and, shit. and and for people for people who don't know them as well and don't have haven't built up a trust with them i know that and even sometimes when when you do have that trust 
when when someone who is otherwise a good person and someone that you think of as 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 a friend or even just someone who you think is a reasonable person and you just you, you like to read what they write or you like to watch their videos and you or listen to their podcast and you think yeah that's a good person um and they engage with someone like bearing or like sargon or or and, and, and pick one they're all the, they're all basically the fucking same right yeah um and and they and they go on to their show and they and they engage with them what that says to me and what that says to a lot of people who have been targeted by those people is oh okay so they're not bad enough for you to tell them to fuck off you yeah, know, and I, yeah, like, and I think that's and I I think that's a big thing that's happened with um with Contra. Yeah, and you know that's and I and um and I think what happens is what happens is is that like let's say you may have because I've seen it unfold in conversations like you may have had a really bad experience with someone right, but yeah. the person that you know who's going to like engage in a conversation with this person who has been nothing but a shit to you. Yeah. They haven't experienced that. Or let's say, you know, that purse, that shit is shit to you, but to this person, they have been yeah. more cordial and things like that. So you'll often hear the other person say, well, you know, I engage with this person and they've been nothing but civil to me, or I've been, I've engaged with this person and she comes off and they come off as cool to me, you know? And it's like, because you don't, you don't know them yet. You haven't, <laughs> exactly. you haven't engaged with them enough yet, or you haven't you haven't said anything. You haven't expressed an idea that they abhor, and you know they're liable to go off on you yet. But the thing about it is, the thing the thing about folks who are nice, who are otherwise overall shitty people, but they're nice to folks to try to hide that, is that they can't hide it for long. Yeah. It's like it's it's gonna come out sooner or later, and or or even not that it's like like I uh, I'll take the shoe on head thing. Um, I remember Mike saying you know some there are times when you know they would interact or whatever and she was nice and things mm. this and this and that but then she go on Twitter and just be a total like oh god I don't yeah. know. Sorry, I was about to. I was about to let a slur fly out. You were I, about to drop a bomb. Yeah, I was about to bomb. I don't want to do yeah. Any, I don't want to give anyone any more fodder than I've yeah. probably already given. <laughs> but she was just a real, like a real jerk. Like just, just yeah. you know how people just sometimes tweet shit and they just put their ignorance out on display for like everyone. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, they act as shit lords acts. They will be assholes to people because they can, because, you know, it's just Twitter. They're just typing on a keyboard or, you know, on their phone or whatever, whatever. And there's no chance of them ever meeting that person. There's no chance that there, there's a small chance of ever, you know, really seeing this person in real life or whatever. Yeah. You know, they will say all these things they will they will say all these things and have all these dumb and bigoted perspectives that they will put out there but just because they've interact they just because they've been nice to you in interactions then it's like oh well I'll still talk to them or whatever and it's like it's you know people do the most to try to separate um their intent or whatever from the or their or their disposition as a person mm -hmm. from the things that they say yeah. and the things that they do and it's like no it's like no bitch your words are were your the things that you say and that you hold on to as like bio truths the things that you think are valid you know true or not when you say them and behave in a certain way. Yes, those are extensions of yourself. This is not, you're not about to pull a Donald Trump and, or whatever, or Hulk Hogan and be like, oh, well, that, this is just a persona. And <laughs> I'm, I'm nothing like this in real life. Yeah. Uh, just came out. 
Yeah. Like, oh my God, I'm like, I'm just, I just get on YouTube and I just say things. I used to say that, but I was, I, I would say that in a joking way because right. most of the things I say and most of the things I tweet, like, I'm not putting on a show for anyone. Yeah. But, you know, but the thing is, is that, uh, no, you don't, you can't separate certain, the things that people say from, you know, them, maybe them being a good person and yada, yada, yada. Like, I don't give a shit if Sargon approached me and was like a total gentleman. Like, yeah. fuck away from me. Like, yeah, fuck you. Fuck you. There's there's no need for us to talk. There's there's nothing we could talk about that would, you know, be meaningful. And on top of that, the things that you the things that you, you know, the thing the the ideas that you perpetuate through your channel and any other means of, you know, communicating with the world since you're banned from Twitter, um, are repugnant. Yeah. yeah. And you don't care. You don't care about misinforming and disinforming people. You just care about pandering to the masses. So, you know, to keep your subs up and get money because you know you got you got kids. Yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. there's no there's no need for me to like I don't like I don't, you know, I don't give a shit about intent. I don't give a shit about someone's disposition. Because yeah. then we'll get shit like, oh, here's the dapper white nationalist who's, you exactly. know, who's Who's you know who's taking over? Who's causing a you know who's raging up a storm or something like that? And it's like dapper, not get the fuck out of here. <laughs> give a fuck how dapper a white nationalist is. I don't give a fuck how. Oh my god, have you seen this? Have you seen this Nazi? This you know this person who works for you know the the new you know uh, wizard of the the Southern Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. He looks so he he looks so sharp and fresh and clean, doesn't he? No, who gives a fuck, fuck him? Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah, I I agree. I don't. I mean, again, like if it's someone that I, it's, I just I I shake my head a lot. You know what I mean? Like I I usually in private. I usually don't share it with people. Sometimes I'll get like a private message from someone else who feels the same way as I do, and they've <laughs> seen like the same tweet or they've seen the same Facebook status, and they're like, "Did you see what so and so just said?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't fucking know." <laughs> You know, um, because I, I don't, you know, I, I have, I'm still friends with people who other people think are assholes. Like I get you, not everybody's going to like everybody, you know, everybody has their own different breaking points for when they will write somebody off. But, you know, I just know for me personally, like I would much rather hear a story about someone on my side, so to speak, telling one of those people to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> then I would hear a story about, oh, actually, we got coffee and we got along. We had a pretty good conversation for 20 minutes. Like, yeah, I was just like, I'm, just, you know, and, and I really think that's, it's, it's definitely like, I'm going to say the P word again. So I'm going to drive your people, I'm going to drive yourself <laughs> crazy. Ooh, it's, it's definitely a, it's definitely a privileged thing because yeah. for, for certain folks to be able to do that. And mostly white folks to do it. You don't you don't see a lot of people of color doing that, unless they've sort of you know put themselves as a token. Like some was it some black guy, some black dude, and yeah. Bunty, and Bunty King, because yeah. you know I was watching the Destiny. I was watching Destiny and him talk and stuff like that, and I was just it was just just screaming like oh god yeah just screaming token like oh i don't really think that's what he was saying and da, 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 da. it's like dude i'm sorry i i work or yeah i work around the globalists and um <laughs> and i also and i also you know look things up so that i don't sound like an idiot who doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to things like dog whistles yeah. like you cannot say you cannot say to me or any person that the Jewish question. Yeah, no. not a fucking dog whistle. Like, no, 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 no. no. But I. Everybody understand. knows what that means. Everyone knows. They should know. Means. Yeah. Everyone knows what the fuck that means. Like, yeah. But um. But I digress. But yeah, yeah. like uh, we I we've all been in 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 the position where like we've seen what someone has tweeted or a status on Facebook, and you're just like. I have to scroll up or scroll down just so that we <laughs> remain friends. Exactly. It's happened. 
Uh, yeah, it happens to you me know, a lot. And, like, and, and that's another, that's the thing that doesn't get talked about. It's not like we all, it's not like people, it's not like we, you know, evil leftists. It's not like we, we always just like, just, you know, nuke the site from orbit just to be sure and yeah. just can't you know, fuck this person. You know, it's not like, it's not like Gavin McInnes is, you know, fuck you forever. We're not, it's, it's not always like that like it's never always just like a clean cut or something like that yeah sometimes it starts with muting somebody sometimes it yeah. starts with like you know like i said um i'm gonna scroll up or scroll down and i and i posted that on facebook before i was like you know some of y'all some of y'all <laughs> like are lucky because are lucky that like i scroll up or scroll down so that we can remain friends. Yeah. And you know, everybody everybody has their everybody has their boundaries and their limits to where they're just like, okay, I just can't fucking take it. You are just a bit too problematic for me. I just can't fuck with you right now. And that's okay. You know what I mean? And it's like people kind of people really don't know what friendship means. Friendship doesn't mean that we get to know each other. And so you're allowed to pretty much like like push through you know, habitually line step over yeah. my back over boundaries. Like that's not what friendship is. Friendship is we get to know each other. I know your boundaries, you know mine. And since we respect each other enough, we don't cross them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We don't get, we don't start to, we don't like go out of our way to just totally like, like I said, habitually line step over certain boundaries that we have with each other. It's like, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're friends. That doesn't, you know, you don't get to like objectify me. You know, that would be like you and I being friends and you sort of going out of your way to like try to touch my ass all the time. It's right. like, it's like, man, it's like, hey. Yeah, not cool. Like, cool. Like, yeah. oh, come on, come on. You're wearing that shirt that I like, Jazzy. Da, da, da. It's, <laughs> like, it's like, like, no. Yeah. No. That's, well, and not, you know, that's not how this works. It's not how and, works and 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 also i think a lot of people because you brought it up uh a second ago or you brought it up earlier about how you know well you know so and so has always been nice to me i mean uh you can you can decide that you don't want to be friends with someone uh if they've always been cool to you but you see him habitually being an asshole to other people you know what i mean like that's completely fair like if you and i we're, you know, hang, we, we hung out in person all the time and we get along great and we're always cool with each other, but you know that I'm a fucking dick to that, per, to that person over there, like for no good reason. Yeah. And it's you like, can, yeah, it's like, you know, if you feel so compelled to like, you know, why are you a dick to this person? Yeah. You know, like, and, 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 and I'm sure it's at times it, it can be difficult because it's like sometimes people don't like, oh, my God, you have this thing with this person. I really don't want to get in the middle of that, even though I'm, I, you know, I'm hell, even though, you know, I'm hella cool with you. But this person is well, me and this person are just having an exchange of ideas or whatever. And I'm not trying to, you know. I'm not trying to insert myself into that, into that drama or whatever. Yeah. So I get it. At the same time, um, who's to say that it's not that it's that you can't, you know, ask somebody or sort of, you know, hold if hold them accountable. Like, hey, like yeah. I see that you're treating someone this specific way. What's up with that? Yeah. And, well, you know, and then if that person is like, well, that's none of your business, blah, 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 and then they start being a dick to you, then you already have your answer. Exactly. Oh, oh, my friend was right about you. Okay, fine, <laughs> no problem. You know, but like I said, and, and it's a, and especially to folks, you know, you're talking about folks who have an established history being a shit to other people, yeah. and being a shit like for a living. Yeah. Like that's the only that's the that's like the consistent part. They are consistently a shit to other people, and you see it. But 
you think somehow you think you're special somehow that you're safe yeah and it's like or, you're only safe as long as you stick within certain barriers that are okay for this person now if you are okay with enduring that and putting yourself you know and walking on eggshells in that matter do you um life is more complicated than that yeah yeah so um but but yeah um myth con was shit <laughs> I, i'm yeah i'm sorry i'm just totally switching the subject no go for it i don't, go for I don't it. know how much longer you can go we're i want to wrap up in a few minutes but if you okay. have something to say about MythCon, yeah because we, we definitely talk about I definitely you know from yeah. what i saw i saw people who were live tweeting it of course i heard the the audio between thomas smith and sargon um i you know from the person who was live tweeting the entire thing i saw the screenshots and saw what um and read what you know the person who was live tweeting seeing what folks were talking about this and this and that yeah. so it basically looks like it was a place where shit lords can go and give talks and just have their have their shit have their toxic shit be perpetuated and not questioned yeah exactly and also have folks going in thinking that they're going to do one thing and they end up doing another and they're unprepared for that other thing like if if thomas was supposed to just interview sargon then that would have been a different story that would have been all right whatever but then they just sent him in there to debate this asshole yeah and he didn't have enough ammunition to really go in. He wasn't, he didn't have enough to be as prepared as probably, as much as he probably would have wanted to be. Cause that's the thing. If you are gonna choose to go out of your way to engage with these folks, you have to be prepared. Yeah. You have to definitely prep, watch their videos, see what other live streams that they've done, you know, Go through their time, go through like their Twitter timeline and see all the see whatever they talk about and retweet and things like that. Um, be prepared to be booed a lot because the folks that they cater to don't give a fuck about facts. I mean, yeah. we're still having to have we're still having to explain to folks what it means when you say when a person says, I wouldn't even blank. Yeah. And yeah. like trying to explain what that, if you have to over, if you have to explain time and time again, oh, well, what I really meant was no, 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 that's bullshit. Like, and it's, and it's an insult to people's intelligence that folks are, that he and folks are still trying to get away with, oh, well, I wasn't trying to say that. What I was really trying to say is, motherfucker, we yeah. know what it means when you say, I wouldn't even rape you, or I wouldn't even fuck you, or I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even like, you know, let you stick the head in or something like that. Yeah. We know what the fuck it means. We like, like we paid attention in English class, motherfucker. <laughs> we know what happens when you put some certain words together. We can, we can, we can figure out what fucking context is. Context yeah. clues, bitch. Like, <laughs> and well, and, and, and it's a real, ins and it's not only just, you know, of course, you no, know, his fanboys just insulted all the time, so they don't give a fuck. But it's an insult yeah. to everyone else who's sitting there and it, you know, watching or listening to this shit, and they're just like, and you're just like, are you serious? And that's and that's why he had to when he recorded, you know, himself talking to his mother, he <laughs> had to, he lied. He rephrased it. Absolutely. He rephrased it. Cause like you knew what you were doing, bitch. Like you knew exactly what the fuck you were doing. Well, and you know, the no. other thing, the other thing about it is that um, when you say something like that to a sexual assault survivor, you don't get to tell them how they're supposed to react to it. Exactly. If like, you decide to be a dick to somebody, you don't, you don't then get to dictate, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> you don't get to dictate to them how to react to the sh to the fucked up shit that you just said. 
Yeah. You don't get to police their reaction or what they do, especially if they decide to, you know, I don't know, report you to Twitter or some shit like that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um it was so basically MythCon was a shit show between that, between Arma Skeptic and and Shu on Head giving basically a talk, not being like questioned or having their ideas challenged in any way. Yeah. And of, you know, and 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 you know, anti-theists who were arguing about Islam being the real problem and criticizing liberals for not taking it seriously enough and not criticizing yeah. Islam enough, blah, 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 yakety schmackety blah, you know. The fucking atheist 101 spiel shit that add, which sort of adds fuel to the fire on why atheists aren't really taken seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because while they've discarded God, they haven't discarded dogma. So, um, so yes, that is why, in my opinion, uh, MythCon was shit. And that is also why the Atheist Conference will be better. I was hoping you were going there. <laughs> That's right, I said it. <laughs> At me. Well, I mean, yeah, it's... We're, so you actually, this is, this is kind of cool because uh, I got in touch with you about being on a YouTube panel at the atheist conference next year, which you very graciously agreed to. Yeah. And, and yeah. And then you uh, got talking to Lee, who was one of the organizers, and now you're yeah. actually doing a lot more there, aren't you? You're, you're yeah, uh, um, more I involved. Put the, I helped them put the website together yeah. and, um, you know, get, you know, just gather up information and things like that and, you know, talking about it on, on social media and things. Um, how I met Lee is uh, I went to this event, Godless Under the Stars. Mm -hmm. um, it's a gathering put on by um, Gotham City Atheists and also yeah. New, York, New York Atheists, I believe. But basically it was a night honoring um, Mandisa Thomas of Black Nonbelievers, Inc. So Mandy was there, so of course I had to go. <laughs> I had to go. And that's how I met Lee. We got to talking and I was, you know, and I was like, wow, I'm really for this. I dig it. If there's any way I can, you know, help to be involved, just let me know. And, you know, he let me know that they were having some things with, you know, getting their site off the ground, things like that. So, I, you know, I just offered to help with, you know, that a little bit. And since it's um the platform they're using is Wix and I use Wix for, um, for my two websites. So it was easy. <laughs> and and Mandisa will be at TAC. Yep. Well, you'll be there. You'll be there. Yes, I'll be there. Yeah, Christy will be there. Oh man, I I just feel so great because you know since we're all so in a way so spread out across the world. Yeah. Um, here's the hoping that maybe Mike and um and the motivator will come because that would be super. Actually, actually, what am I talking about? I met Mike over <laughs> I met Mike too. It's no big deal. Um, he was um <laughs> he came over because he was doing some work in a camp up in somewhere in upstate yeah. New York or whatever. So I got to hang out with him for a couple of hours. He's cool. So but yeah, he can, he can come back if he wants to. It's fine. <laughs> we'll let him back in the country. Yeah, if he we'll wants let him, to. yeah, we'll let him back in the country. Yeah, he's we'll, we'll let we'll we'll leave word at the gate. Let that guy in if he shows yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, not that I can stop him. You know, he's got the complexion for the protection, so <laughs> <laughs> he can come and go as he pleases. Yeah, Nobody... pretty much. He can come and go as he pleases. He's just oh, looking yeah. like what? Foxy. Foxy said I couldn't come. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> I, I got to I hung out with him for uh, an afternoon in Baltimore while he was in the country over the summer and uh, I, I used my awful down under accent once and he was like is he's like is that your Kiwi accent and I was like okay <laughs> no. sorry I'm sorry <laughs> you know? sometimes yeah if it's, if it's bad sometimes we just gotta apologize to those guys yeah. Man, yeah. so um this was awesome and I feel like I I, I want to just double underline 
the atheist conference because that is that that's going to be a big deal and that is again that is a July, it'll be July 6 7 and 8 right. next year July 6 through the 8th at the Roosevelt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan and yeah. tickets are available now go to the atheistconference.com buy your tickets purchase the hotel you know book your hotel stay cuz it's only um it's only uh, 169 a night. And yeah. that's for mid for Midtown Manhattan Hotel. Trust me, I live in New York where everything's too fucking expensive. <laughs> um, well, a buck sixty-nine a night at a midtown at a midtown Manhattan hotel, like and because it's like it's right near Grand Central, y'all. Yeah. And that's, it's a four-star hotel, like it's a gorgeous. It's a four-star hotel, so Definitely jump on that. Definitely, please jump on that discount because if they book enough rooms, we can we can definitely we'll definitely be able to have it there in you know 2019 and going yeah. forward and things like that. So please, excuse me, go to the atheistconference.com, um, like TAC on Facebook, T A C. Um, follow the atheist conf. The atheist conference. We're on Twitter. Is at the atheist con something. Yeah, I yeah, think it's, it's at atheist C O C O N F. It's at the yeah. atheist con. Follow, follow us there. Well, I mean, follow the atheist conference there. Um, and yeah, man. Um, more speakers to come. Uh, Aaron Ross speaking there. Yeah. I finally get to meet him. I didn't get to meet him. <laughs> Um, David Silverman is there. Hemat, um, the friendly atheist. Right? Yeah, Hemat Meta. Yeah. Hemat Meta, the yeah, the friendly atheist. He'll be showing up. Christy Winters will be there. The one janitor will be there. Yeah. Um, Contra. Contra, Contra will be. Yeah, Contra will be there. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I actually have to talk to Lee about asking. Um, True Puka to be like a speaker or something. That would be cool. Yeah, so and he's local, so you know. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying to arrange that. So I'm gonna talk. I'm actually um, I'm uh, I think I may end up hanging with Puka and Bunny on Friday. So oh, cool. So yeah, we could talk about that a bit more. But yeah, I'm definitely trying for that because um, uh, it's too bad we can't talk about this now. Maybe maybe another time. Yeah. But I am definitely on board with um with his atheum minus idea. Yeah, me it. too, me too. I have to, actually, I'm gonna ask him if I can mirror that video because it was good. Yeah, I think that's kind of a, a stroke of genius. Yeah. You know, it's like atheism minus all this fucking awful horseshit. Exactly. has <laughs> been attached to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean. And it, doesn't, and, it, and it doesn't give me the feel from Atheist Plus because like one of the first videos I made was criticizing Atheism Plus. It really wasn't like, yeah. it really, really wasn't like my bag. I had nothing, personally against it but i think yeah me neither that, but you know they were i just wasn't with the idea of pushing that you know because i'm an atheist it's only natural that i'm blah 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 and it's like and it's it's not really that way like i cared like i started getting into feminism mm -hmm. at the same time that i was you know um letting go of religion and things like that but i cared about you know racism and sexism all so i cared about all that stuff before i you know gave up religion so it's not necessarily connected i don't think that it you know i don't think it's logical to really say like oh because i'm an atheist i'm i'm a feminist because i'm an atheist and this and this and that people come to those things um people come to those things for a lot of reasons and even yeah. people become and yeah, people become atheists for a lot of reasons you know personal experiences um, actually, um, you know, reading, reading the book, reading like, you know, the Bible and the Quran and stuff like that and questioning things, you know what I'm saying? Some people may have done so far as to, you know, to almost, um, become a priest. Some people have gone to sure. seminary school and just got to the point where just like, you know, this, this doesn't really make sense to me anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah, and I think that's really why, besides the whole, you know, because it was mostly feminist sort of behind it or whatever. Oh yeah, it got it got a lot of pushback and stuff like that. But yeah. I think focusing on, you know, 
advocating for, you know, secular causes and things like that. And we can also find common ground in things like um, making sure that the country stays secular, making sure that our government stays secular, um, tackling discrimination because of, you know, being atheist or agnostic, non-believing or whatever, um, uh, you know, fighting for fighting for certain causes like, you know, like, like, you know, healthcare and, and, you know, reproductive justice and things like that. Things that were things that affect everyone as secular Americans that I feel like our focus should be on and could be on, yeah. you know, but if not for the shit lords who focus on culture war, they're not just, and not even just focus on that, but just push false information, you know, disinformation, and just outright bigoted things. Yeah. Because they, they'd rather focus on that because the other things that need to be focused on, they don't get, they either don't give a shit about it because it doesn't, because their daily lives won't be affected if, say, um, an atheist can never be president or more nominal right. folks can't get into office or that um, neighborhoods are gerrymandered or that the Johnson Amendment is repealed or something like that, you know, because you don't see them talking about these things. They don't because like that it's in their best interest to continue being anti-feminist and things like that because yeah. that's their bread and butter that's their lane so they stay in it they may come you know which i mean granted that's all you know that's all they know how to do they're all one trick ponies and carbon copies of each other so you know when they try to come for other people and they get pushed back to their lane that's fine but the rest of us are over here and we're actually trying to do shit because we actually, there are actually, there is shit going on besides the cultural stuff, the social and the cultural stuff. We care about that too. Yeah. And there are the, we can care about that and care about these things that are actively, that actively affect other people, which we now know that people like Sargon, he doesn't give a shit about. He doesn't he doesn't give a shit about making other about things being inclusive and, you know, welcoming, you know, marginalized folks into the fold. He does not care about that. And this is the thing, and that, you know, this is a thing. The last thing we'll say this and I'll go. I'm sorry. No, go for it. In regards to folks wanting to like engage with the other side. These people have shown you and told you who they are, what they are and what they care about, what they don't care about. They've let you know who and what they are from day one. So you already know the deal going in. Now, if you still wanna go and engage, then that's on you again, you know, but you know, it's a very unnuanced and a very privileged thing to you know, pontificate on that and harp on leftists for who don't, who choose not to engage either because they know that it's a waste of time or, you know, marginalized groups. We know that it's a waste of time and that they won't listen. And also it's not like we go out of our way to avoid it because it's in our face every day. We deal with it every day. You yeah. know, like I, like I've probably been called a nigger more since I've been active on Twitter than like than I ever have in my life. You know, I'm in New York. Like, I mean, it's not saying that racist things don't happen in New York, but they yeah. do. But like the the more active I become on social media and things like that, like you know. It's yeah. yeah, but anyway, so yeah, that's it. You know, um, the atheistconference.com, go buy tickets, go reserve a room, do it. You have so many months. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the one to end on, baby, right? So uh, says, Go do it <laughs> and go see that movie when it comes out, and go see it. It looks Black awesome. <sighs> All right. 
No white people, you cannot wear dashikis. They're not for <laughs> white people. Just we'll do, we should let's just dress how we always dress. Yeah, just let's just come, just do, just, just come with with you know really tight jeans or you know mom mom and dad <laughs> jeans and mom and dad shirts and chucks. Like it's okay. I'm gonna go wearing a Superman shirt just to be a clueless asshole. Just to or be like, you, oh god, don't what? What? Go. God. Buy a at least buy a yeah. Black Panther shirt. Buy a Black Panther shirt. Yes. Yes. Do it. <laughs> it does look like an awesome movie. I really can't wait so to see says it. Kala. It's it looks so good. Like I, I can't wait. And I can tell that like that a lot of the material from like the Christopher Priest run and from Coates's run with yeah. how with how his suit just comes automatically on his face and things like that. Yeah. I can tell that, you know, Ryan Coogler, he did his homework. And that's good. That's good. And he's got all the right actors. He's pretty much got every black actor in America and Britain. I'm just I'm here for it so much. Yeah, it looks great. Somewhere. Well, uh, Foxy Jazzabel, thank you so much for thank hanging out with me for a couple hours. Thank you, King SJWC. <laughs> exactly. I'm the I'm king of the S Jews. People, oh, you know, people oh, yeah, apparently you're king of the S Jews from that. You remember that old drawing that drawing that they did of you? Or yeah, I was the big one on top. Yeah. You were so I was like, damn, Steve is so big. He's like, like I, they don't do what I tell them. Exactly. <laughs> it's like all these people down below me. Like I, they, I don't. Yeah, even if like, I tried to boss them around, I don't think they listen to me. It's like, uh, do you guys actually like, like, if you guys actually like, broke into our, you know, private groups and stuff like that? Nobody does what Steve says. Like nobody, nobody does what Steve tells them. Yeah, they ignore me most of the time. Yeah, they're like, shut up. They're like, what? Fuck you. Who asked you? Pretty much rage against the machine. <laughs> Fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. <laughs> if only they knew how little power I had. Yeah. Shit. Like, guys, oh, I'm, shit. Just, I'm just a man with a wife and a cat. Like, yeah, that's that's all. I'm just trying to make my way in this world. You know? Yeah, pretty much. Like, look, like, guys, I just make, I just make YouTube videos. Who am I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, Foxy. All right. It's good talking with you, Steve. Good talking with you, too. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.